Okay, Acts chapter 10, continuing our study uh, in the book of Acts. Of course, looking at the Bible as a timeline, Genesis through Malachi, Old Testament. And we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, talking about the 33-year period, Christ on earth, up to the crucifixion. I'll say the death, burial, and the resurrection for right now. And then the book of Acts picks up. We'll make it nice and big today. Of course, Acts chapter 9, which we did last week, is where that guy Saul is saved on the road to Damascus. Acts 7 and 8. Acts 7, the stoning of Stephen. Uh, and it says at the end of the chapter, uh, and the witnesses laid their, their cloaks at the feet of the apost- of this guy named Saul. And then Acts chapter 8, it starts right out with Saul wreaking havoc on the church. Acts 9, he's going with letters to Damascus to throw them in jail, bring them bound back to Jerusalem, any of those that were following Peter and the Twelve, because we have a church going on here that is called the, the church at Jerusalem that Peter and the Twelve started. And on his way to throw these people in jail in Acts 9 last week, Saul is saved. And he's saved by the Gospel of Christ, a different Gospel than what's being preached here. Now watch this in Acts 10, the very next chapter after Saul is saved, it's interesting, The I say interesting, it's all in the Lord's will, but the events that unfold here. Again, the, the book of Acts, a transition from the doctrine of, that the Lord Jesus Christ taught the twelve in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They started teaching that doctrine immediately after the resurrection of Christ. And for anywhere, you know, some people have it at six months from Acts 1 to Acts 9, or six months uh, after the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ is when Paul is saved. Some have it as late as seven years. Um, somewhere between six months and seven years, yeah. I, I've got to say I'm leaning more and more towards the uh, six months to a year time frame in studies, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. The point is, during this time period, the twelve get on with the church, and things are going to start to transition away from this church to uh, from this way to that way, the book of Acts uses. And by the way, if you on the internet are using anything other than King James, uh, most other versions are just always going to call it the way. Well, in King James, we have this way and that way. This way is the doctrine taught by the Twelve. That way refers every time to the doctrine that Paul starts teaching. He doesn't actually start teaching it until Acts 13 but you'll see that consistent throughout the book of Acts. It's a transition from this church to the church which is the body of Christ. Two different Gospels, two different churches, if you will. How does one... And of course today there is only one church, and that is the church which is the body of Christ. How does someone get into that? It's as Paul says... After the book of Acts, the next book is, is Romans, then First and Second Corinthians. In Romans chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, Paul says, For I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So what's the gospel of Christ? Because that's the power of God unto salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that when He hung on that cross, the Lord Jesus Christ, He died for our sins. He shed His blood to pay the penalty for our sins. He took those sins to hell, spent three days there in hell, if you will, paying the penalty that you and I deserve. He went there for us. He, He died for our sins. He went to hell for us, but on the third day, God the Father raised Him for our justification. And anyone that believes that, the moment they trust in that and that alone for their salvation, they're saved. Uh, Ephesians 1.13, they're saved, they're also sealed unto the day of redemption. 
Okay, and they immediately become a member of the church, which is the body of Christ. The only church that's in existence today in the year 2013. Now, the book of Acts is a transition from this church to this church. Transitions in doctrines. We always say when you're studying the book of Acts, do not follow what you see Paul doing in the book of Acts. Follow what he teaches in the books that he wrote, the 13 books, Romans to Philemon. All right, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Okay, he is a Gentile. Okay, Italy, Gentiles. Verse 2. But notice the description of him. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. And in your King James Bible, the people always refers to the Jews. Okay, the church at Jerusalem that the twelve are starting, the Jews. Uh, gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Okay, so a couple of things about this man. Back here in Genesis chapter 12, it is the story of a man named Abram, who later became Abraham. How about that? Two men that had their name changed. Abram to Abraham, Saul to Paul. In Acts 13, his name's going to be changed. But in Genesis chapter 12, God the Father made a promise to this guy, Abram, and he said, I'm going to bless them that bless thee, and I'll curse them that curse thee. And basically, in all nations, and in through thy seed shall all nations be blessed. Okay, I'll curse them that curse thee, I'll bless them that bless thee. Verse 2 of chapter 10 of Acts, A devout man, one that feared God with all his house, and which gave much alms to the people, blessing thee, the seed of Abraham, if you will, and prayed to God always. So, he is in the, in the covenants of promise as in Genesis chapter 12, he being Cornelius. Okay, because he's doing what he's supposed to as a Gentile, to gain favor with God Almighty, he's blessing the seed of Abraham. He's giving money to the seed of Abraham, and he's praying to God always. Now verse 3. He, who's the he? Remember, we've always got to get context. Who's the he in verse 3? Cornelius, Cornelius from verse 1. Okay, that's who we're talking about. So, Cornelius, he saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. So that is Peter of Peter and the Twelve. Uh, verse 6, He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner. Of course, that was the end of uh, chapter 9 back there that when we left off last week, uh, two weeks ago when we were studying this last together. Uh, whose house is by the seaside, verse 6, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel did spake unto Cornelius, was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Okay, so you, you, I think that's pretty clear. Cornelius goes to sleep, has a vision, a dream, sees an angel of the Lord who says, go send the men to Joppa and bring Peter back. So he does that. Verse 9, On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So Peter's going to fall asleep and go into a trance as well. Verse 11, And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners, and let down to earth. And watch this vision now. And remember that and up until this time, okay, the, the Jews are still... They've got the ordinances from way back in the Old Testament there, which included dietary laws, right? And let's just jump ahead. Pork for the Jews, you know, to, to devout Jews to this day, they will not eat pork, right? Okay, unclean animal it's called. So let's watch what happens here. Verse 12. 
wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But, Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Okay, so as we start making this transition, things that are common and unclean are wrong for the Jews to partake in, right? Verse 15, And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, three different times now. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter, and underli- you know, really look at the next three words, doubted in himself what this vision which he, ha- which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision. Okay, so in verse 17, Peter's doubting in himself what this vision means. The men show up while he's doubting it, and, and then it says there, in verse 19, while he's still thinking on the vision, where he's doubting it. Okay, the Spirit spake unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. Isn't that something that the Spirit of the angel of the Lord knew that Peter was doubting these things back there in verse 17? He doubted them in, in himself, and he says, Go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Verse 21, Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. So Peter knows already that they seek him. Watch what Peter knows and what Peter does not know as this story unfolds. That will be very key. So Peter knew from his vision that these three men were there, right? And the Spirit even said, you know, go to the door, the three men are there. So he shows up and they don't even say who they are. Peter says to them, uh, verse 21, Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said right away, he speaks first, Behold, I am he, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? So he knows that they're there for him, but he doesn't know why. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? Verse 22, And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, now watch again the description of Cornelius, description of Cornelius, a just man and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into this into his house and to hear words of thee. So they tell Peter that he's supposed to come there and hear words of thee. Again, I want you to remember that phrase. And hear words of thee. Verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, so they've got to spend the night there, then the next morning, on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So Peter's going to bring some of his Jewish brethren with him to Cornelius' house. Uh, so verse 24, and, uh, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Okay, I'll think of it like this. You know, I've called some kinsmen and near friends here. We're all here ready to study together. So, so Cornelius knows that Peter's coming, and he brings all his friends together. I mean, why not? We're talking about Peter. We're talking about the same Peter that the Lord Jesus Christ gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven to, right? Keep your hand here, and let's just go back and really make sure we see in Scripture. So go back to Matthew. Sixteen, nineteen. Um, Matthew sixteen. Sixteen. Matthew sixteen, 
verse 19. I'm just jumping into the middle of the story. So, verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You might want to maybe just fold that down. We might come back to that. But just remember, that's the Peter we're talking about. Yes, sir. It's, uh, oh, gosh, I forget the story. But when he walked on water, Jesus, was Peter the one also that had the doubts? Absolutely. So it's yep, He was doing Peter's fine as long as he kept his eyes on him and he looked down and whoa, and fell in the water. Like Peter has that issue. Within, he's a man. He's, he's like us. He's, he's in this thing. The flesh. Yep. Yeah. So, remember that about him. So we're going to talk, come back and talk about that. So back to, to Acts 10 now. So, so verse 24, Cornelius gets his friends together. Verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now think about that right there. Does Cornelius know who Peter is You know, during that three years Christ was with Peter in the twelve? I mean, is it? Evidently. He falls to his feet and worships him for crying out loud. He knew that Peter was one of the twelve. So again, remember that as we go into this story. Verse 26, But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Remember, our faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the Gospel of Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he talked with him, verse 27, He went in and found many that were come together. So again, Cornelius has a good group here. And he said unto them, So unto Cornelius, and again, what nation nationality is he? Italian, and he's Gentile. Okay, and so are the people with him. Uh, so verse 28, so Peter talking here. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing. It is unlawful for what he's about to say here. It is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Whoa. It's... Was Peter going against the law to be there with Cornelius, one that feared God, worketh righteousness, was a good report among the nation, all the people of the nation of the Jews, but yet, was Peter breaking the law to be there with them? This means yes. He sure was. To keep company or even to come unto one of another nation. It's an unlawful thing, Peter said right there. But he came anyway. But because the next phrase, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So, before this time, Acts chapter 10 is where we're studying today. Before Acts chapter 10, could there ever have been a time where the twelve would have thought it okay to go to a Gentile? Absolutely not. Now, again, if you're watching on the internet in particular, I know I'm preaching a bit to the choir to most people in the room here, but you got to see in Scriptures, you know, anything you think you believe, make sure you have Scripture to back it up. Don't believe something until you know in Scriptures that it's true. I'd be like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17. Now, we're going to take a minute here and go back... I want to go one more verse and then we'll go back. Verse 29. Let's catch the end of 28 again. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I, came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. Now does Peter know why he's there? Evidently not. I ask therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? Why am I here? Now wait a minute. We just read the passage. This is the Peter that has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. This is the Peter that's now the evangelist, if you will, getting on with the program. Acts chapter 2. Who's the one that stands up on the day of Pentecost and addresses the multitudes? 100,000 people, right? Right there in front of me. Peter! 
But yet when he comes to Cornelius' house, he does not know why he's there. If he's the evangelist, why wouldn't he, even if he didn't know why he was there, why wouldn't he preach the gospel to him first? Because evidently he doesn't think he's supposed to. Because, go back to, to Matthew again, chapter 10. So again, you on the, if you're on the internet, just, just let the Bible say what it says. Okay, we all have, you know, I, I certainly had things that, you know, my grandparents taught, my parents taught me, and my grandparents taught me, and I mean, we all have things, in other words, what I'm saying is we've been taught as, as children. At some point, you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Okay, the only things you should believe are what you see in this Bible. And until you see it here, keep searching it out. I'm going to use one I think I'm okay in here anyway, maybe not on the internet, but tongues. Either they're for today or they're not. If you don't know Scripture as to why you do believe it or why you don't believe it, then don't make up your mind yet. Don't believe it just because Grandma did. Wrong reason to believe something. You've got to, you've got to be like the Breens in Acts 17, 11, and 12. It says they were more noble than those, they, the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. Yeah, Apostle Paul, he was there talking to them. They didn't believe Paul when he said it. They searched the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. And then verse 12, the first phrase, therefore, because they searched the Scriptures daily, therefore, many of them believed. Don't believe it until you see it in the Scriptures. Okay? And I know I'm preaching to the choir in here again, but that's it's just one of those key foundational principles on how to study the Bible. Do not ever take any man teaching you at His Word. You've got to see it in the Scriptures. You've got to know. Write your own statement of faith. I believe you know, either tongues are for us and these are Scriptures. Why? I believe tongues are not for the church which is the body of Christ today in the year 2013 because of these Scriptures. But obviously there's things that are more important than that. Let's start with salvation. You know, salvation, being saved, either is or you ain't. I mean, it's as simple as that. Either there is a day, a moment in time, in your lifetime, where you did put your trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, took them to hell, was raised again for your justification. Either you have a day, a moment in time, when you trusted got saved, got, and we're sealed then at the same time, or you don't. Okay, and it starts there. Because if you don't have that one right, it doesn't matter what you have in the rest of your statement of faith, because this is what determines where you spend eternity. Okay, so Matthew chapter 10, I asked you to turn there. So we're talking about Peter. He gets to Cornelius and he says, I ask therefore, for what intent have you sent for me? He doesn't know why he's there. He said it was an unlawful thing for him to be there in the first place. Well, here's why. Matthew chapter 10. Let me get there with you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples. So make no mistake, this is the Lord Jesus Christ calling his twelve disciples. He gave them, the twelve disciples, power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Okay, he's setting up the kingdom with these twelve. Verse 12, now the names of the twelve apostles are these. And he goes on to name them. Now watch the first thing he tells these twelve after naming them. Verse 5, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Okay, you can't miss it. That's why Peter in Acts chapter 10 says, it's an unlawful thing for me to be here. The law back here in Old Testament said no. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 10 told us no. I was there. Peter was here, right here. In Matthew 10, when the Lord says, Go not into the way of the Gentile. That's still true, clear out here to Acts chapter 10. Okay, you can't miss it, you on the internet. Up until this time, Peter, the twelve. This is the first Gentile that Peter goes to and he says, why am I here? It's unlawful for me to be here. So how could there be anything before this that would apply to us today? 
Okay, just stay with it here. Then he says in verse, let's go back to verse 5 again, go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Samaritans were the half-breeds. They were half Jew, half Gentile, come right there. And then he says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the gospel he's supposed to preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? And go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, question. Uh, for the sake of those on the internet uh, who might think of what is commonly referred to as the Great Commission with all nations, um, you, know, you may want to hit on the fact that it was to start at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, then the uttermost ends of the world. It was a specific order, and Jerusalem had to accept for, uh, first, right? Absolutely. So, I, I wish you were say up here so I wouldn't even have to repeat it, because that was said extremely well. So, if we go to the end of the book of Math, Matthew, chapter 28, the Great Commission. Churches love to jump on the Great Commission here. And, and basically, so verse 18 of chapter 28, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now when did He command them? The books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would be the doctrine that He was commanding them. Uh, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay? So, and in um, Mark 6, let's try the, the Mark 16 passage as well. Um, verse uh, so Mark 16, verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth in is baptized shall be saved, but he that, that believeth not shall be damned. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm uh, going to get into a whole lot of other things if I keep going here. Um, brother, help me. I'm missing the, the passage right now about starting in Jerusalem. Let me in Acts uh, 1. Thank you. Acts chapter 1 we're going to. Thank you. Right after in verse 6 now, Acts chapter 1 verse 6, and, and Peter and, and the eleven at this point uh, ask the Lord Jesus Christ there before He ascends into heaven, the end of verse 6, Lord, wilt Thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Um, let's come now to verse 8. Well, let's keep reading. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye, ye eleven, okay, ye eleven shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So there was the order that they were to follow. They, they needed to be in Jerusalem until Jerusalem all believed. Okay? We have no record other than one or two times of Peter leaving. But we have no record of the twelve ever leaving Jerusalem. Okay? They stayed there. They never finished their ministry in Jerusalem. So very good point, brother. Thanks for bringing that up. I have one too. Well, I have a comment at least. Uh... Or no. So you've got Peter over here in 29, 1029. Okay. It's a question that he poses, correct? Yes. So what's happening here? Is it is the Holy Ghost fizzling out on him? No. Because of the fact of what Jesus promised them, don't worry about the things that you're gonna say, don't worry about what's coming out of your mouth, don't premeditate on these things. He's got a question here. Yep. He's dumb. Yes. But he's speaking. Yes. So Peter is, but what he's, Peter's speaking what is true, okay? So let's, what is true is that up until this time, Acts chapter 10, it's an unlawful thing 
for them to verse uh, 28. It's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to even come unto one of another nation. Yeah, okay? the Holy Ghost so there. that right there, uh, it, it's an unlawful thing. So he shouldn't be there. Therefore, he shouldn't be casting his pearls before swine would be something that the Lord Jesus Christ taught the twelve. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Gentiles are swine. So he's... Um, call this a little bit of an assumption. To him, it's a... He's casting... He would be casting his pearl before swine if he were to preach the gospel to them. So he doesn't know why he's there. They're, they're, they're common. They're unclean. Okay? One other thing. So Matthew 10, we just read... We just read about go not into the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was the marching orders, and Peter up until Acts chapter 10 is still following those orders. While we're in Matthew chapter 6, uh, 15, let's just grab one other quick story. So Matthew 10 we see, Matthew 15 we're going to see something else here. Did the Lord Jesus Christ really mean what He told the twelve there in Acts 10? And what we're going to see here is in verse 21 of Matthew 15, the answer is yes. Then Jesus went thence and departed in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, so she's a Greek, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto Him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Does she know who He is? Absolutely. O Lord, thou son of David. This Greek woman absolutely knows who He is. My daughter's grievously vexed with the devil. Does she have a problem? As big as it gets. How many parents you know, could, could just empathize with her right now. And why wouldn't you take this to the Lord Himself if you could? You know, we certainly take things like this to the in prayer. This woman went right to Him. Verse 23, But He answered her, Not a word. Okay, You can't miss it. And His disciples came. Oh, good, His disciples came. He ignored her, but the disciples are going to fix it, right? And the disciples said, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Why is that a problem? She said, Help me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Why would the twelve say send her away after he ignored her? Because they were commanded to in Acts chapter 10. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 24, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew chapter 10 that we just read. He's consistent. He's practicing what he preached, if you will. How many times do we say, you know, make sure you're practicing what you preach, right? Verse 25, Then came she in worship, saying, Lord, help me. She wants help. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 26, But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Wow, second time he's going to insult her. Call her a dog. Don't cast your pearls before swine. At least he didn't call her a pig, I guess. And the children he called her a dog. The and she said, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I guess she recognized exactly her place in the world at that time. The Jews were God's chosen people. Then Jesus answered, 28, and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Okay, but it took three times. If she would have quit after one, no help for her daughter. If she would have quit after two, no help for her daughter. She had to go back the third time even. But you get the picture that they were not to go to Gentiles. They were only to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now back to Acts chapter 10. So that's why Peter says in verse 29, I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. Okay, and I ask you to remember back there when we were reading earlier when, when Peter you know, was told why he was to go there, but yet he, when he's there, he still doesn't know why he's there really. He's there to talk to them, but he, you know, I ask therefore for what intent have you sent for me. Verse 30, And Cornelius said four days ago, I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms 
Remember in verse 2, we gave alms to the people, or had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, Simon, whose surname is Peter. He's lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Okay, so they knew he was supposed to speak unto them. Verse 33, Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Now remember, this is Peter who is given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is the Peter that we have the largest denomination or religion, whatever you want to call it, today. Over one billion people, they call Peter the first pope. And yet Peter didn't know why he was here. Peter knew that he, it was an unlawful thing for him to be here. Okay, So a major transition going on here. That We're, I mean, we're going to take a break here in just a minute and then come back and, and finish the chapter out when Peter starts talking. Okay, But just, just remember those things. So, so Peter sees it in a, in a... Let's just sum up the first part of this study today. So he gets this vision, and all animals are in there, including the unclean animals. And Peter says, no, I've never eaten anything that's common or unclean. Two terms that are also used for Greeks and Gentiles, okay? We're common, we're unclean. In the, in the Jews, in, ever since Genesis 12, thousands of years, all the way up here until Acts chapter 10, that has not changed. We saw that while the Lord was on earth, He told the twelve, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 10. Matthew 15. Samaritan, a uh, um, Canaanite woman comes up to him. Gentile woman. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. First he ignores her. The twelve say, send her away. Then he calls her a dog. Then he helps her after the third time when she recognizes that basically, yeah, I am nothing but a dog in the Lord's eyes, but... I'm here to help my daughter. Parents, we ought to think about that. To what extent would we go to to help our kids? So then Peter, it's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. I ask therefore, for what intent have ye sent for me? Okay? And we'll take a break here. If you want to kill the camera, we'll sure. take a break here, come back, and pick it right up in the second hour. <laughs>